Arcs and chords. Our objective is to apply properties of arcs and chords. Who uses this? Market analysis use circle graphs to compare sales of different products. Let's look at some vocabulary. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of a circle. An arc is an unbroken part of a circle consisting of two points called the endpoints and all points on the circle between them. We have a minor arc and a major arc. A minor arc is an arc whose points are on or in the interior of a central angle, whereas a major arc is an arc whose endpoints are on or in the exterior of a central angle. A minor arc is labeled with two points. A major arc is labeled with three points. Now if you look at the diagram, arc AC would be a minor arc, whereas the measure of arc ADC would be a major arc. If the endpoints of an arc lie on the diameter, so like E and G, then the arc is a semicircle, and half of a circle is 180 degrees. Adjacent arcs, arcs of the same circle that intersect at exactly one point. They're basically next to each other. Congruent arcs are two arcs that have the same measure. In the figure, arc ST and arc UV are congruent. Let's try a couple examples. The circle graph shows the type of music sold during one week at a music store. Find the measure of arc BC. Well, we know that the measure of arc BC is going to be equal to the measure of angle BMC. We can use that because we know that the measure of angle BMC is 13% of the entire circle. Well, a circle is 360 degrees. So we want 13% of that 360 degrees, and that's how many degrees the measure of arc BC is. Well, if you're dealing with percents, move the decimal two places. So 0.13 times 360 will give you 46.8 degrees. So the measure of angle BMC and the measure of arc BC is 46.8 degrees. Take a moment to try these next three on the bottom. Now that you've had a moment to try the three on the bottom, let's try them together. The measure of angle FMC. Well. FMC is 30% of the data. So 360 times 0 0.30 gives us 108 degrees. So the measure of angle FMC is 108. How about the measure of arc A? H B. Well, the measure of arc AHB is 75%, so 360 times 0.75 gives us 270 degrees. And our last one, the measure of angle EMD. EMD is 10%, so 360 times our 10% is going to give us 36 degrees. The arc addition postulate. The measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measure of their two arcs. So if you add arc AB and BC together, well, it's going to give you ABC. So the two little pieces equals the big one. Let's try one. Find the measure of arc C, D, E. Well, we know that the measure of arc C, D is 90. Since it's a 90 degree angle, so that means C, D will be 90 as well. And we also know that we have vertical angles so we know that DFE will be 18 as well. 
So that means the measure of arc DE is 18 degrees. Well, now we can add them together. So if we take our measure of arc CD and the measure of arc DE, we'll end up with CDE, or CE in this case. So 90 plus 18 gives you 108. In a circle, or congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent chords. So if you're looking at this diagram right here, if you have congruent angles, as in angle EAD and angle BAC, if they are congruent, then that means the chords between those two angles, DE and BC, they will also be congruent. Congruent chords have congruent angles, or arcs. So if DE and BC are congruent, then the arc BC and the arc DE will be congruent. And then if your arc DE and BC are congruent, then your angles will be congruent. So basically, your angle, if your angles are congruent, then your chords will be congruent, and your arcs will be congruent. Let's look at an example. Find each measure. RS is congruent to TU. So RS is congruent to TU. What's the measure of arc RS? Well, if we know that RS and TU are congruent, then that means our arcs are congruent. So set each piece equal to each other. So we have 3x equals 2x plus 27. Solve for x, so we want to get x to the same side of the equation, so therefore subtract 2x from both sides. So we have x equals 27. We're not done yet, we still have to plug it back in. And 27 times 3 will give us 81 degrees. In a circle, if a radius or diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So, you have a chord, EF, and you have a radius, DC. If they are perpendicular, then CD cuts this EF in half. So that means this little piece off to the right and the little piece off to the left here, they're both congruent. Now, this one's just kind of a reverse of that. In a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord is a radius or diameter. So, if JK bisected the chord GH perpendicularly, so it cut it in half and did it at a 90 degree angle, then that means that JK has to be the diameter, and AK would have been the radius. Let's try an example. All right, find QR to the nearest tenth. Well, we see that QR is a chord, and PS is the radius, and it cuts QR in half, and it meets it at a perpendicular. So we need to kind of find some way of figuring out what this length is right here. Well, what's really cool about circles is the radius is the same no matter where in the circle you go. So if the radius is the same no matter where you go, make a better line there so you can see it, the radius is the same. Well, if the radius here is 20, you know that PR must be 20 as well. Well, now we can use Pythagorean theorem to find the side length. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It doesn't matter which one our a and b are as long as c is our hypotenuse. So we have 10 squared plus b squared equals 20 squared. 
and you can simplify this a little bit by saying that means that b equals the square root of 20 squared minus 10 squared, which gives us about 17.3. It's into the nearest tenth, so we're going to stop there. All right, well, if tr is 17.3, we want to know what qr is. Well, if that's 17.3, then that means this one is 17.3. So we can merely just double that, and we end up with about 34.6. And that ends our lesson on arcs and chords.